Good morning everybody, unless of course you're watching this video in the evening, in that case good evening, and you're watching Time Travel TV, and today we're going to be talking about the Battle of Abu Klia. Now, before we start, I'd just like to mention that's not the real name of the battle. The real name of the battle is something else. The reason why we call it the Battle of Abu Klia is because that is what the British called it, and the British couldn't either pronounce or spell the uh, proper name, so they call it that instead. Now, rather than embarrass myself trying to pronounce the proper way, I'm going to stick to the Battle of Abu Klia. So I hope everyone's okay with that, because otherwise, tough. So, Battle of Abu Klia. Imagine, if you will, it's January 1885, and the Mahdist forces are sieging Khartoum, and Britain is sending a relief force under the command of Sir General Garnet Worsley. And he has got his force travelling down river in what was called the River Column. But it soon became clear that time was running out and General Worsley was not going to reach Khartoum in time. So, Sir Herbert Stuart took his forces on a shortcut through the desert to try and relieve the city in what was called the Desert Column. Stuart and his 1,400 men arrived at Abu Klia on the 16th of January 1885 and sighted the enemy. However, they decided not to attack. The next day, on the 17th of January, Stuart ordered his men to form a defensive position called a square. Halt! Form battle square! Take up action stations! Down! Down! Some of the British soldiers were killed by Sudanese sniper fire. Their defensive position off the square moved across the ground very skillfully over the rocky terrain. However, the Mahdist forces made a surprise ambush attack. The British had placed a Gardner gun in the left-hand corner of the square. Now, the Gardner gun had been tested quite extensively in Britain and was found to be very effective. However, it had never been tested in the desert before and due to all the desert dust, it quickly jammed. As a result of this, a hole opened up in the British defences, allowing the Sudanese forces in. <laughs> Despite this, the British were able to repel the Sudanese attack, and the battle was short, lasting only 15 minutes from start to end, ending with a British victory. In total, 76 British soldiers died, with 82 being wounded. 1,100 of the Mahdist forces died in total. However, the battle did not end particularly happy for the British either. Herbert Stuart died two days later of his wounds in a separate battle, and his force did not arrive in time to relieve General Gordon in Khartoum, bringing an end to the First Mahdist War. However, some years later, the Bush will be back for a rematch in the Second Mahdist War. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to Time Travel TV. And I'll see you next time. Cheerio!